The Broncos are back today, folks, and it's time for our very first off season in this Madden 25 rebuild. Year one went about as you would expect for a team of Denver's caliber, seven wins, 10 losses, and we closed the year in pretty horrible fashion against the Chiefs, who went on to win the Super Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys. So they are, I guess, back-to-back -back champions, and we lost that game 35-3. to We knew our defense was bad, but this game really showed us that there is a bigger gap than we thought between us and the Chiefs, and this team has a long way to go, not only to compete for a Super Bowl title, but to compete for an AFC West title. The offense only put up three points in this game, and that's not how you want to close the year with a rookie quarterback and a rookie wide receiver. So there is change in store in this episode, at the very least, for the defense mostly. The offense will have a couple of changes, but mostly the defense will be completely different going into year two, at least, I hope. Most of year one was spent learning about our rookies with Bo Nix and Troy Franklin, who has gone down after his rookie season to normal dev after being a star with hidden dev to open his career. Bo Nix will sit at star dev at a 78 true overall without the morale taking things down. But we spent most of our time trying to figure out where the holes were on this team. And we have talked a lot about this secondary and making some big adjustments here. So. Caden Stearns will become a free agent, uh, so will a couple of other players, but hopefully Chris Abrams Drain, who is right now our third corner after trading away Levi Wallace at the deadline this past season, hopefully he becomes the true number three corner for the entirety of year two. I hope that we can bring in somebody over Damari Mathis to be a better number two corner. And I'm definitely looking towards the draft at that position, especially with our first round pick. And I'm also considering a potential trade up from rounds three or four into the first round to find somebody else either on the defensive line, at linebacker, or in the interior of this offensive line because Sam Mustafer is not going to cut it as our center. Powers was actually in the running for best offensive lineman in the AFC, so he played well above his current overall, but he's also not that young. He is currently 20 years old, so probably a year or two away from having some significant regression. We also have to think about tackle because Garrett Bowles has gone down by two overalls and he's now 33. And McGlinchey is also, I believe, 31 years old or 30 at this point. So this offensive line is getting older, except for Quinn Maynertz, who he just gave an extension to a few episodes back. So there definitely is change in store for the offensive line these next couple of seasons. We'll see how many holes we can fill in this offseason. Then a running back. We decided to not extend Javante Williams. He will become a free agent. We'll bring him back if I don't like the other options at running back, but I think it's a combination of maybe a not-so-good running back and a not-so-good interior offensive line that led us to a poor average per carry this past year. We'll just have to see what the options look like. And at receiver, I think we're okay. Could we use a better player than Franklin as the number three? Maybe. Him losing star dev definitely hurts his development going forward. And at least Marvin Mims keeps his star dev here as the number two guy. But we also lost Josh Reynolds to a major injury. And he would be in the top four of our depth charts if he stays on the roster. And don't forget, we fired our offensive and defensive coordinators this past year. It's time to hire some new ones before we start to look at the roster and how things will shape out there. Not really sure what offense to run. The spread sounds nice for Bo Nix, who likes to take off a couple of times per game. We could try out a vertical zone run as well with Emmanuel Ortega, but I would like somebody that already has a couple of, you know, staff unlocks on his staffing tree and Bryant Dable is a free agent so is Sean McVay imagine one of those guys as our OC that would be something huh there's the West Coast spread which would be better I think for our offense less deep throats with Bo Nix he doesn't have the best arm talent and the best deep accuracy Mike Tomlin has plenty so we have options here and it's mostly going to be between the former head coaches or somebody like Seth Henry 
There is Todd Walters. I honestly forget the names of the guys that we fight. I don't want to bring the same guys back, but I don't, I don't think they had any of their staff tree things unlocked. But if we're going to maximize the talents on this team, this, this young talent, we got to find somebody that has at least a couple of talents on every single tree. I think it makes sense to hire Mike Tomlin as our defensive coordinator, so he's going to be the hire there after... I don't know how long he was in Pittsburgh for, but it was a long time. But now he's going to be bumped down to a defensive coordinator. Welcome to Denver. I've always liked Sean McVay offenses, and he has the West Coast zone run scheme with at least one talent per development tree. And then we have a guy down here with Marvin Fowler, who is more of an air raid offensive scheme with power running. Seth Henry also a power running guy with more talents than McVay has unlocked. You got Todd Walters. Vertical zone run. I think I'll probably hire Todd Walters as our OC. That will give us over 160 franchise points to spend. Staff points, that is. I'm going to spend most of these on offensive line guru for Todd Walters. So let's go with, you know, boosting run block finesse. I do have it on the slowest. Um staffing tree like progression so it will take us quite a while to get these things filled out just because it's going to be probably a long series most likely look we'll it's a run block power help with this run game a lot hopefully with whoever comes in as the new starting back we got 44 left to spend and we might just want to save that and don't forget we have added at least 12 players to our draft board so far all these guys were supposed to go in the first couple of rounds of the draft we have most of these guys up to at least 60 percent but my favorite guy here is definitely luke blackstock who's got top five talent he's a great man-to-man -man and zone corner and we got to get somebody alongside pat sertan here so we got him we got gaither who could be an option after round one if you want to wait and get somebody else here in, in the first round but my philosophy is if you know a guy's talent is top five you can afford to pass out especially if he's going to drop to you at pick 10 where he's currently ranked i think at pick 11 so with us at pick 10 if he's there he's going to be the selection but i'm still considering a possible trade up into the first round once again upshaw and Gaither, both round one talents though. Upshaw will go before Blackstone. Gaither will not go until the second round, at least according to Mock Draft 4. And here's one last look at the guys leaving our team as free agents. Javante Williams, P. Ryan, Cody Barton, unfortunately for us. I would have liked to keep him, but he just does not have any interest in coming back. Khalil Shakir, Audrey Gestime, who was just a rookie this past year. I want to bring him back, but he doesn't have any interest currently, so I'm not going to waste money trying to um, overpay for him. Caden Stearns, Jonathan Cooper, Griffith, DJ Jones are starting defensive tackles, so that's a bit big need for us as well. And stopping the run and things like that. So a lot of guys leaving. Not many starters, though. So I think if we can bring in a lot more starters, we could have some good depth here in year two. We're going to switch to a West Coast zone run offensive scheme because we were on multiple power run just for this first year, but only 63% of the offense matched that scheme. I think Williams was an elusive back over a power back, if I recall correctly, but we're going to go to this because 86% of the players match our scheme. And defensively, we have a 90% scheme fit on the 3-4 under scheme, but I will probably change our playbook once we bring in some more players because if we're going to change our scheme we got to change our playbook too and we got to keep in mind that we have a 3-4 defensive scheme which means that we have pass rushing outside linebackers we have the left end sliding inside of the defensive line and we have a pass rushing uh, right edge player and only one defensive tackle starting so we got to keep that in mind. Plus, we got man to man corners and a hybrid free safety run support strong safety. So if we're going to maximize this scheme, we got to find guys that fit, um, fit the scheme and, you know, fit those archetypes. So here are the top free agents. You got Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa as the top free agents. And if you look, 
closely here. Nobody has any interest in the Broncos until we get down to Bobby Wagner, who's 35 years old. I'm not usually in the business of signing free agents over like 32, 33, especially if I'm trying to do a rebuild. But if they're only going to be here for one or two years, I'm not against it if we're just trying to set things up for the future. Elijah Mitchell looks to be the top running back after Javante Williams, who again has no interest in us. And Mitchell is a scheme fit. So he seems to be one of the only top free agents that actually has slight interest in joining us here in Denver. Nobody else is that high. Kamara is a free agent. That's interesting. Not the greatest free agent class at all. We'll have to really think about what to attack here. Owusu Kormoa is much more of a pass coverage guy. He actually, I believe, picked off Bo Nix in uh, one of our last games of the year back in the penultimate episode of the season. And that was to win the game against the Browns. And... If we're going to sign him, I would move him to middle linebacker, at least while he's on our team. And we do have $48 million in cap room to spend, so we can definitely shell out for like one or two star players like a Wusu Koromoa. Elijah Mitchell, let's check out what he did this past year on the ground. 3.5 per carry, uh, that's not great. 14 broken tackles, only 5 touchdowns behind McCaffrey. McCaffrey must have gotten hurt at some point because Mitchell got plenty of carries this past year, but 3.5 per carry behind the Niners offensive line, that is not very good. There's Chuba Hubbard, also a scheme fit at running back. Could running back be a focus for us in the second or third rounds of the draft? Maybe. This was definitely his worst year so far. Three touchdowns, barely got over three a carry. He was actually the second tailback behind Jonathan Brooks this season, who's a rookie. There's Madison, who's not exactly a scheme fit. But he does have 77 elusive back. I'm not really a big fan of him, but he did break 47 tackles this year. That's a lot. You know what? Alvin Kamara could be kind of that bridge option for us in the backfield. 4.3 per carry is highest since 2020 over a thousand yards nine touchdowns he's also a great receiving back he's pretty much good in all areas so if we're going to get a guy that's going to give us kind of a new look on offense Kamara could be that guy although he's not the same player that he once was he's coming off a pretty good year and he does have the highest interest of most of these options here there is clear herbert who is a much younger option at 27 years old 3.5 per carry though and fumbled on 61 attempts not the best receiving back i think i like going after camara here for like one or two seasons there is kenneth gainwell there also is cam Akers, who has the highest interest so far 3.5 per carry in pittsburgh he barely got the rock all right, I think I'm leaning towards Kamara. Let's offer him a contract. Doesn't have the greatest speed or anything, but just give us efficient running, and I feel good about this. Two years sounds good to me. We'll offer that, and uh, we're the only team to offer him so far. At tackle, you've got David Bakhtiari, but we already have Garrett Bowles and McGlinchey not in the business of really bringing another older tackle to it been for like one or two years before we have to draft somebody and there aren't any young options either i think i'll just probably look towards the draft at tackle and we'll go from there at center got a couple of options here you got drew delman who is a scheme fit although he doesn't have any interest he's only got one other team offering him right now and I mean, he would be a big upgrade over Mustafer, despite not being the best pass blocker. But he would be good for the run game. Only two sacks a lot as well. He wasn't bad in pass coverage. I'm going to offer him a contract too. Two years. 
about eight mil cap it. Sounds fine to me. We'll compare this offer to the team above us. It's the Packers. We're going to have to increase our offer, but I think this is a better fit or just a better deal for us going after a better center and worrying about this kind of a pick in the draft in a couple years down the line. Now, here we have some interests from a lot of 30 year old plus defensive tackle free agents. Still got 33 mil left to spend. And these guys are all probably around where DJ Jones is in terms of ratings. So you're not going to get the best upgrade here. There is Bobby Brown who's only 25 years old. Not going to be like a starting caliber player at least here in the first year. But if he develops well, he could be an option. Used to play for the Rams and now as a free agent. And... 25 tackles, 8 tackles for loss on how many snaps? Not a whole lot. A thousand is probably what you want to see for a starter, so... 8 tackles for loss on 360-some downs played. That's pretty good. All at least off for him for some depth. Onyemane is the top free agent and had 10 tackles for loss and 3 sacks on... About as twice as many downs as Bobby Brown. I think I'll pass on him for now. I do like making signings based on stats. So what about BJ Hill? He played for the Bengals, I want to say. That was before this past year. Played for Arizona in 2024. 11 tackles for loss. Two sacks. About as many downs played as Onyemata. I just don't think it's worth offering to these top guys when Brown clearly was solid with a lack of playing time. Jones had more than any other guy on this list. I think I'll pass on the rest of these defensive tackles and we'll go look at Owusu Koromoa and consider signing him and moving him to middle linebacker because I don't want to bring in a guy like Bobby Wagner. I would rather spend some money on a top guy at only 25 years old. He's got nine other teams offering though, and he wants 26 mil per year, which would take up the rest of our cap room. We can't really fill every spot of need, obviously, in one season. And we still have a draft coming up too. What is a six-year offer worth... I don't know how much money this will be in total. 157, I think, in total, actually. Where does this get us? Not even top five. We're going to withdraw the offer because we are trying to address at least three spots here on defense, and that will not help us out. There is Tyrell Dotson, who is a scheme fit middle linebacker, coming off a year in Seattle. 81 tackles, six tackles for loss, two interceptions, five deflections, one forced fumble. And he was their starter at middle linebacker. Those aren't bad stats. Is he worse than Cody Barton? Probably. If you look at his ratings. Let's just take a look real quick. Solid tackling. Solid pursuits. Really good speed, honestly, for a middle linebacker. Good play wreck. Block shed, not so much. Good coverage guy. I like Dotson here as a guy that actually wants to play for us. Let's offer him a contract. And if Cody Barton does not get any offers, we might want to offer him to and bring back him for a couple of seasons. Now, he doesn't really fit our scheme. That's the problem with him. Even though he's an 80 overall and a 79 field general. I guess because Run Stopper's his primary scheme fit, he's not technically a scheme fit for us. But regardless, I think both guys could be pieces for us in the future. So let's offer Dotson first. He's got four other teams offering to him. We'll probably have to increase this by a couple of ticks. That does get us into first place. Okay. And then Cody Barton has no other teams offering. He's 28 years old. I would like to bring him back. 
At corner, we have a couple of options, but 15 teams are in the sweepstakes for Ponce and Adebo, who had that really costly penalty against us in that game against the Saints a couple episodes back and pretty much lost them that game. Carter is a scheme fit, has two other teams to offer, but we are at the top of our negotiation ceiling right now, so we have to evaluate first and see where these go before we can offer him. Barden and Kamara and Brown are all still looking at offers, but we do get Dotson and Dalman. So we got Dalman away from the Packers. That is a huge get for the offensive line, especially for run blocking. And Dotson's going to be a pretty key starter for us in the second level of our defense. Barden, though, has six or five other teams offering, and they're all ranked above us right now. We're probably going to have to back off on him. We can keep the offer where it is for Kamara, but for Brown, we're going to have to up it over the Bears. But I'm still willing to do so. That will put us back to number one. Let's go see if a Debo is still available or not a Debo on um, Carter. It looks like he is not. Neither is a Debo. Both guys leave in the first round of evaluations. I think now I'm leading away from corner entirely because nobody seems to want to play for us at all. I don't mind Brandon Jones at strong safety, but if we could get somebody better, like Donovan Wilson perhaps, not opposed. He has no other offers currently, so why not go after a better safety? He is 30, so it won't be a long-term option for us. We'll do one year. And we did, of course, allow Caden Stearns to become a free agent. And Micah Hyde is the top guy available here. You got Tony Adams with really high interest. Eric Rowe has high interest. But I doubt we get a starting caliber free safety in the draft. So could address a lot of defense here in the first week of free agency. And I think he's going to be a guy to go after here for one season. And it won't cost us that much. I do like Chris Barnes. I had Chris Barnes back in my Rams series for a couple of seasons, and he was pretty solid. Coming off a 77 tackle season where he played mostly as a starter. He wouldn't be a bad second linebacker to have alongside um, Dotson, so he doesn't want that much money. This would pretty much round out our offers for now until people start to accept some more contracts. We still have Singleton, by the way, but he's 31 years old. Barnes is 27. This will give us way better depth here, and I'm not opposed to doing it. Let's offer him. We have signed Donovan Wilson, Alvin Kamara, Chris Barnes, but not Micah Hyde. So we have made six signings so far with... Less than two mil left. And now we got to find a punter to replace Riley Dixon. And that will pretty much close out our first offseason here in terms of free agent signings. Let's just go after J.K. Scott. He's 28. Our final two signings are fullback Reggie Gilliam and punter J.K. Scott. That rounds out our first free agent class here in this Denver Broncos rebuild. Let's go focus on this draft now. But first, the free agent recap of the entire league. Awusu Kormo signs with the Lions on a massive six-year contract. Back to Yari. Heads there as well. Amari Cooper becomes a Charger. Adebo also heads to L.A. Ryan Kelly, now a bear. Javante Williams will join Amari Cooper in Los Angeles. Jamal Adams returns to the Jets. Stonehouse heads to the Texans. Mike Hyde to Las Vegas. Hopkins to Green Bay. Wagner to the Commanders. Judon heads to the Buccaneers. Xavier Woods to the Bills. Round to the Rams. Carter signed with the Vikings instead of us or anybody else. Poyer, a Buccaneer. Elijah Moore as well. Elijah Mitchell joins the Raiders. Cody Barton becomes a Colts. 
And those are the top couple of players here. Odo Beckham Jr. returns to the Rams. Stephon Gilmore, now a Cardinal. A lot of signings by the Raiders and the Chargers here. And the Rams too. I am going to use our private workouts on a handful of safeties, namely Jamil Barber and probably Trevor Bankston. We'd have to switch these guys around at their positions, but they would be scheme fits once we do so. And then one last position, probably defensive tackle somewhere, maybe like a day three selection. We got most guys fully scouted here, at least well scouted. Larry McCoon has A finesse moves, but F block shed. Looking for a guy that has high block shed here to be a good run stopper. Don't really see that here after rounds two and three, unfortunately. We'll use it on Jaquez Weston to learn what his talent is, hopefully. With C block shed, C finesse moves, and C power moves. That's pretty well-rounded stuff right there. Let's confirm it. Weston, it does end up being a day three talent, so that kind of gives you a, a good idea of what his overall is going to be. But Weston, it does end up being a day three talent, but there is a lot to work with here. This guy has a really high floor, I think. Now, for the ceiling, we don't really know, obviously. You really never know in this game, but you at least know what his overall is going to be. And you know that he will have room to grow in every area, and it won't be bad growth, at least, with only one rating at D or lower. So, I definitely still like him as a potential day three selection, or at the back of round four. And we do learn that Trevor Bankston would be probably a bad second or third round pick, round three to four talents. I mean, he seems solid, but he does lack man coverage, and he also has injury concerns. But Jamil Barber could be a sleeper pick, potentially, at the top of the second round. Or if we trade up, he does have round one talents. Would be, would be a free safety for us. He's got great speed, a really good athlete across the board, pretty much. And has good man coverage, play wreck, a injury, so he would be on the field a lot and would have... No injury problems. I like him a lot. I'm not going to use Mock Draft 5 because it typically just gives away the entire draft. But in Mock Draft 4, again, we don't have Blackstock going until after our pick at pick 10. And Barber is not supposed to go in the first round according to Mock Draft 4. So we could wait until... The end of the first round, trade up from our second round pick and take him and have two pretty big secondary pieces added to our team because these tackles, almost every one of them, is not a first round talent. We don't really have the best draft capital to use via trade, but we could send a player somewhere else, like one of our receivers, like Josh Reynolds, for example, could be an option to send out somewhere else because we've got Mims. Sutton and Franklin over him right now currently. I do like Franklin despite him losing his depth rate. So we could see a player being traded here in this draft. But let's dive right into the 2025 NFL drafts. We are officially underway.
Well, that was pretty cool. We're going to manually advance here in the trap. I guess we're going right in. Here's Goodell. Muted, of course. And the first pick of the draft is Tyrell Donnell. That's him, I think. Yes, it is. The next selection is made by the Washington Commanders. Scratch that, it's the Giants. My bad, they go with Daryl Ross, another offensive tackle. So top two tackles going here. Why is it going across? I thought it was going to go vertically, but it's going horizontal instead. Steelers next up. And they select Woodyard, who is a pass-rushing linebacker. The third tackle taken here in the top four picks is Romeo Money by the New England Patriots. Now it's the Commanders, and with the fifth overall pick... They select Holiday. I think he's a defensive end. Yep, Mike Holiday. And next up, the Cardinals select outside linebacker Travis Page with a sixth overall pick. So George Rhodes, that top quarterback, still on the board, and so is Upshaw. And despite being mocked to the Colts in mock draft four, I believe Upshaw has been surpassed by Burrell, the third linebacker off the board. And joining Denzel Ward in Cleveland, it's Alex Upshaw. And the pick just before us at number nine, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go after right tackle Cliff Alexander. And now it's time for us to take a guy that we had our eyes on for the past couple of episodes. Joining Pat Sertan in Denver's secondary. Welcome everybody to Luke Blackstock, the 10th overall selection. An A-plus scouting report pick. Number four in true value. We get him at number 10. Great footwork to mirror routes and man coverage. Can be trusted with a variety of zone coverage concepts and has concerns about his speed, but I'm not concerned about his speed. I like him a lot. I think he's going to be fantastic. Eddie Watford is the first receiver off the board, taken by the Tennessee Titans. Quincy Carroll, drafted afterwards as the first defensive tackle off the board. There goes Lance Brown to the Bears, and the Saints will take George Rhodes. That's not a surprising pick with Derek Carr as their current starter. I think that makes a lot of sense. The Seahawks go Javier Hayward. And there goes the first zone corner and Deshaun Levingston taken by the Carolina Panthers. I'm thinking about probably a trade up in the last five picks of the first round to get that strong safety that I was looking at earlier on. There it goes back to back left tackles. Aaron Smith off the board, the other zone corner in the top five or so. At that position, and then Alex Ridley taken by the Lions. They're going to have quite the receiving core. Mark Leonard taken right after him. Those guys were very similar playmaking archetype receivers. The first safety off the board is Mike Clark heading to the Bengals. Tim Toller heads to Green Bay. There goes Mike Allen, that really athletic tight end. And then Karen Carmichael, or Corn Carmichael, excuse me. That was the only other first-round talent tackle, aside from Tyrell Donnell. There goes Darren Kincaid, one of those round two to three talent prospects. Her center is Parker Chandler. A block for McCaffrey over in San Francisco. Now we have the last four picks of the first one. Let's try and trade up here with our second-round pick and get that strong safety. The Jets have almost no cap room to allow for a trade, so I'm going to instead sim their pick here first. And they take right guard at JJ Lane. Now it's the Eagles on the board. We're close to striking a deal here with Philadelphia to trade up with our second round pick, give away Brandon Jones, and move up nine spots here in the fifth. But they want 
Probably one more pick here. It's going to have to be a pick for next year, I think. Attack on one more five. What do they say? Oh, we're so close. But we don't really have that much draft capital here. We are a sliver away. They're just trying to extract as much capital as they can here. All right, we're going to have to move things around. Actually, I'm going to let them pick here at pick 30 and we'll try to deal with the Cowboys, perhaps. Philadelphia takes a different safety than I was looking at. Okay. That could have gone poorly, but they take somebody else. Now for the Cowboys. They don't have any cap room. So we can't trade a player that would take picks instead. Which again, we don't really have. So we're going to have to sim pick 31. It won't take a safety unless the game is bad. And they take a receiver instead. Now it's the Chiefs. We cannot trade with our own division, especially in the NFL draft. So I'm going to sim that pick. And they take a tackle. Now it's the Panthers. They won't take the offer to move up. I'm trying to chip away off Adam Troutman, but they won't take the deal with a couple extra picks in there. They don't really want a safety, so hopefully they don't take the guy that I'm looking at. If you look at the draft board, he is pretty far down. Two spots behind Gaither. But can we risk that until our pick? Probably not. We'll sim like two more selections. There goes Eric Hayward, who was an earlier safety. The Giants have no cap room and they take a center. We have struck a deal with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a bigger move than I imagined initially. We have made a hole at defensive end with John Franklin Myers being involved here. We get their second round pick plus a three and a four next year in exchange for our second round pick this year and our fifth next year. But I think this is going to be a good value deal for us and we get the guys that we want, especially here in this round. But let's go take Jaleel Barber and move him to free safety. That's going to be our move here. And then we'll think about one of these tackle options, although they're pretty much all off the board for the first couple of rounds. But Jamil Barber, welcome to Denver. Excellent pick. Number nine in true value, whoa. So he pretty much should have gone top 10 before our 10th pick. High football IQ, can be trusted with a variety of zone coverage concepts, not a burner, but decent speed. That's a good start. The Colts end up drafting Mike Gaither at pick 39 overall. So he's now off the board. That means all the top three guys that we were considering have been selected. Now we can move through to the third round. We're going to make a surprise pick here. I'm going to take running back Greg Cooks, who's got really good carrying. He's got some power to his game as an elusive back with B-Stiff arm and B-Trucking. Juke's not so much, but he's fast. He's the, the, the number two speed guy in this class. Really just solid athlete across the board. And I think he's the right guy to take here. To be the potential starter once Kamara leaves us in a year or two. He was number 34 in true value, so we get him pretty much 40 spots l later than he should have been, been been taken, really. So nearly first-round talent. He breaks tackles, he works hard to protect the football, and as a hard-nosed runner, as an elusive guy, that's what you want. 92 speed, that's pretty good. Normal development, though, that's fine. I think that our first-round pick have normal dev, too, I honestly forget. Jaquez Weston is still here, and he is towards the top of the board at defensive tackle. I like his skill set a lot, and of the guys available, he seems like the most well-rounded player. Now, there are a couple guys that have really good finesse moves, like Larry McCoon here. They got two guys with him and Holcomb. 
But neither guy is a good block shooter, and that does not fit our scheme. We're looking for run stoppers. And the top block shit guy has C block shit, which is what Weston has. So I'm going to take him here. Despite being a day three talent, I think it makes sense to go after him here in the middle of the fourth round. He's going to be the guy. And this was... Not the best pick, actually. He actually has nearly 90 lower spots in true value, but that's fine. He was a former high school power forward, I guess. That's cool. Would have not known that otherwise. No one of element, 85 strength. And again, is pretty well-rounded. All right, so we are desperate for tackle depth just to get somebody else on the roster behind Garrett Bowles. And so you got a couple of day three options. And if we're going to go for a left tackle, it's got to be more of a pass protecting guy. Ray Long has decent pass blocking skills. A awareness, though, is pretty important for an offensive line, but he's a terrible run blocker. We go to left tackle. The top pass block guy is probably Cliff Williams, but he is a undrafted free agent talent. So just based off that alone, probably because the run blocking skills are worse. But the pass blocking is there. Um, if we look at the awareness, he's got the highest. The day three picks seem to be... I'm not really sure why these guys would be ranked as day three players over Williams. I'm going to take Williams, despite him being an undrafted free agent talent. Unless there's a better option at a different position. Actually, I think I'm going to go back to Ray Long. He's got that day three talent, plus B injury is pretty good. Run blocking skills obviously leave a lot to be desired, but I'm going to take Ray Long here and move into left tackle. That's going to be your tackle pick. 189 in true value, average pick. Another guy that played basketball in college for some reason. Sometimes fooled by pressure schemes. That's not what you want to see, but he does maintain balance and it wins often in pass pro, which is what he's being brought in to do. With our last pick, we got to go quarterback or defensive tackle. I'm going to go defensive tackle though. And you get another guy here because we can just sign a mentor for Bonex, which would match one of his motivation tags. Just find... I guess we could go after one of those finesse move guys like Larry McCoon. Why not? Nobody's really great in block shitting here. So let's go after McCoon now. He's also got A power. Or A, a hit power, I should say. That's pretty good. He seems better than Larry Mc... Or I guess that's Nathan Holcomb that does. He seems better than McCoon does. Just on paper. So, let's just do it. And he's going to be... What? D-grade pick. These last three have not been the best. Must become stronger. And... Struggles to get off blocks in the run game. But you know what? He's not going to be on the field, hopefully, on run plays. The draft is over. So how did we do in terms of overall? I did not even check the depth trait for Blackstock. We'll have to check that right here. He comes in as a 77 overall. And these first three picks were really solid. The back three, not so much. But Greg Cooks is actually pretty good. A 74 overall as a rookie. That is pretty good. Blackstock, though... Does have normal developments. Okay. Not what I thought was going to happen with his ratings, but he's got 77 man, 78 zone. He's a speedy guy. So I'm not sure why there were speed concerns for him with 94 acceleration too. Good press, good jumping. I like him a lot. Already decent awareness. No complaints about him. Plus that, that 94 injury is really good. And he's got aggressive play ball tendency too, which is another good thing for a team that is looking to cause some turnovers. So we had no hidden dev rookies in this draft, unfortunately, but we got some good players here. Jamil Barber, 75 zone coverage, we'll have to move him to free safety here in a moment. But he's got good zone and man coverage, so can really play in both areas. Could play a corner as well if, if we need that at, at uh, some point, but also... Has good speed, 
Solid hit power. Good player at 73. That's a good starting place. 95 injury. No complaints about him except for the motivations. But if we get a mentor, then that would really help things out. And obviously the, the uh, dev trait's not great, but let's go ahead and move him to free safety real quick before the year starts. And he will be our starter at free safety, I guess. And we got 74 elusive back Greg Cooks, 92 speed, 94 acceleration, aggressive catch, possession catch, good carrying. He seems like a really well-rounded player. He does have 71 power backs, so this guy can really do it all outside of the receiving game. He'll get some playing time probably over McLaughlin, I would have to say, as our number two tailback. I don't see why not. And he fits our scheme perfectly. Then we get to our steep drop-off in these selections. Jaquez Weston, normal developments. He's got a swim of uh, traits, but 85 strength, not, not great. 70 block shit, 68 power moves. Okay. There is... There are attributes to work with here, but he will take a lot of work to become a starting caliber player. We definitely downgraded overall in terms of overall and defensive tackle this season. But I think it's worth it in the long run. We just got to find the right guys in the next offseason or via trade. And then we are good. Ray Long at right tackle. We're going to move him to left tackle, obviously, because this guy cannot run block at all. But good initial pass blocking skills. Strength, though, not the greatest. And then our second defensive tackle pick was Nathan Holcomb, who is 22 years old, hailing from Tennessee. Swim move and a high motor. Only 80 strength, but 75 finesse moves, 74 tackle, decent speed. Not too shabby. We pretty much got guys that aren't going to get hurt, which is good because we need longevity. We need playing time and availability is the best traits for a lot of players all in all i'm not like blown away by our draft class but i do really like our top three selections the top guy in the entire draft was the first overall pick tyrell Danell. he's got 94 strength and hidden development and he's very well rounded pretty much across the board you really cannot go wrong with this guy he looks pretty awesome Zone corner Aaron Smith also ends up with normal dev just like Blackstock does. 81 zone, 93 speed. After Blackstock, Doug Bryant in the third round was a 76 overall head and dev player. Wow, what a pick by Green Bay. 76 blocks, 84 pursuits, 84 speed. With a whole host of moves, swim, spin move, high motor, coverage linebacker style despite being a run stopper. Upshaw ends up as a 76 overall, also normal dev. So these corners did not have the right dev traits for teams looking for their next X factor, but that could still be earned. He's got a very, very similar just core attribute profile as opposed to Blackstock. Pretty much the same coverage ratings. He's got slightly more speed, but otherwise is almost the same exact kind of player. Oh man, Mike Gaither. He was the guy to get that had hidden developments. He was the guy. One of you mentioned him in the comments last episode about potentially just waiting for him to drop, and we could have done that and taken somebody else in the first round. I mean, his coverage skills aren't too far off of black stocks. He's got pretty much the same speed, same press, and has hidden developments. The top speed player was deep threat receiver, Ryan Booker taken in round six by the Tennessee Titans. The only guy above 96 speed. And 98 acceleration two was just completely insane. This guy is a very athletic, Player and is a 72 overall. I didn't even see that until now. Great pick by Tennessee. Tyree McCollum 
at DT has the highest strength. Best carrying goes to Greg Cook, so we took in the third round. Highest block shed goes to Kenny Monahue. Easily number one. Finesse moves. Travis Page and Woodyard, the top two linebackers taken, are tied for that. Jose Rose, the most power moves. And then man coverage. You got five guys tied for first place, including both Jamil Barber and Luke Blackstock. That's huge for our secondary. Zone coverage, it's Jacoby Davis and Aaron Smith. Then Levingston, then Blackstock. So, I mean, he is good for a reason. A top press guy is Dante Carey, who is a zone corner. And that's pretty much going to be it. The highest intangible grade is 78 for the number one overall pick. In the end, I'm not upset with our draft. We still have some more moves to make, obviously, before we get into the preseason. But those first three picks, I think, will be players in Denver for a long time to come. And uh, we'll see this team now at an 81 overall entering year number two. I'll get training camp set up. We'll face the commanders in week one going to be our first time facing them I think in this series so we'll see the debut of those couple of guys let's get one last look at this lineup real quick so we brought in David Dolman as our new center a big upgrade over Sam Mustafer in my opinion and hopefully Ben Powers keeps up his good play from last year that would really help us out tackle still a need in the long run but I think we're fine for year number two Dulcich returns as our starting tight end with Troutman still behind him. We've got Cortland Sutton, Franklin, and Mims as our top three wideouts with Reynolds coming in as the number four receiver. With Kamara as the new number one running back now on his just his second team in his career after departing from New Orleans. And we got Greg Cooks backing him up with Bo Nix back as the starter at quarterback. Defensively, two rookies become starters in Jameel Barber as the free safety and Blackstock as the number two corner. We got Wilson now as our number one strong safety, but Jones will get plenty of playing time both as a box safety and as a free safety. Baron Browning back as the pass rushing linebacker. Bonito opposite of him with now... Dotson as the number one middle linebacker, then Singleton, then Drew Sanders back off a major injury last year, and Chris Barnes as well to round out our linebacker depth. This defensive line, though, uh, definitely took a step back, but you can't always improve every single year at every position. I'm fine with this. It's still a rebuild after all, so that's kind of where we're at. But Abram Strain will be our number three corner this year full time. And as a specialist, we're going to have Nemes be our slot receiver, Kamara as the third down and power backs, but I still plan to work on the auto subs and get Cooks out there plenty as the number two guy. And we'll have Abram Strain as our slot corner. And that's pretty much it for the roster. I think we improved overall. We have a couple of guys going into their final years of their contracts, obviously as we will every year, but this year, I think that includes Garrett Bowles and McGlinchey as well, I think. Maybe he has got one or two more years after this one, but regardless, a couple of kind of bridge players, and we'll see what the next draft class looks like at the start of the new season, but I'll go through training camp, I'll set things up right there, and I'll probably just sim through our preseason here and just get right into week one next time. But regardless, that is the offseason, guys. What do you think about it? Leave your thoughts down below, like the video, and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys in the year two, a week one opener against the Washington Commanders. Take care. Have a great day.